I mean, I've been building boxes since I've been 12 years old. There's something about the box that I like. There's just something about having a container and have some like secrets inside and something that can be held in the hand and be really special, you know, have this kind of like jewel like quality. What's become increasingly more difficult for me as a furniture maker is being able to sustain the excitement and passion of what I'm designing and building over a long period of time. So one thing I marvel at and stuff, I look at people in other crafts like pottery and to see somebody at a wheel create something fairly quickly or in glass and that shape comes together, just boom, like that. And I've wanted to work like that in woodworking, but it's very difficult. So the attraction for the box is that you can go in and make something, just like you're at the lathe and stuff, you can make something fairly quickly and it can uh, turn out to be something quite interesting. It can be quite beautiful. And I think that that's, that's the main goal, that excitement of seeing something realized. I mean, I like cutting my dovetails. I like, you know, hand planing a surface, but it's always that end goal of wanting to see what it looks like. Basically, it starts off with a block of wood. The first thing you create is the interior. So you're essentially trying to hollow out the form to begin with. And the way I like to do mine, my boxes taper towards the bottom. And so that when the first cuts are made and then the box is put back together, if you drop that center in, there'll be no light showing because you have that taper. So it forms a perfect plug. The box is then glued up. The bottom is cut from what I would call that interior plug. The bottom's dropped in. The lid is made. And that's pretty much how it goes together. Everything's done by eye. There's very little drawing, even on the wood. It's just basically coming in with an idea and going with it and seeing what happens. And then sculpting a little bit on the bandsaw or on a disc sander. If the interior is going to be carved, then it needs to be carved before the whole thing's glued up. A lot of times before the bottom's dropped in, I'll paint the interior. So the whole, the whole interior is finished beforehand a lot of the times. The bottom's glued in. And then once it's all put together, then the carving of the outside begins. The carving and the shaping. Some of them have a little bit of knife work in them, but the carving's pretty much all done with gouges, maybe a little bit of chisel work. You know, when I teach bandsaw box making, I always say to the students, you know, you're probably going to make 10 or 20 of these and you'll get one diamond out of that bunch. And that's fine. I mean, it's kind of like turning and stuff. You know, you don't put a lot of time in it, you know, and if it doesn't turn out well, you end up with decorative kindling. It's not like a table, you know, or a desk, and you've got to continue on and finish it because you've got so much time in it. You can't burn it, even though it came out kind of clunky because you lost interest in it, and it was a bad idea from the start. You know, you've got to keep kind of going with it. I've been trying for 20 years now to kind of open up to move away from this very structured English training that a thing has to go together in a specific way. It has to be built uh, in a certain way. It's good to have foundation and to have an approach. It's, you have to know how to you know, sharpen your tools. You have to know what's going to stay together, stand up. But on the other side of the coin, it does close you off to new ideas because you're biased against them. So these boxes, there's a certain refinement in them. And at the same time, there's this kind of looseness that you would get if you were working as a sculptor or as a painter. And that's the path that I've been trying to pursue.